Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Discipline Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, EL Discipline. Alongside me, always, Suhei Sotomayor. Before we mention the guest, let's get into it. Y'all know y'all fiends, and y'all know what that means. We're serving you in your dose weekly of Discipline Therapy, where not everything is completely free, as we are on Patreon for a plethora of exclusive content for you to see. But what is free is is judgment-free, sucker-free, sensor-free, sensitive-free, and some liberty. God and the ancient ancestors are great, and that means everything else is straight. So go grab your wine, popcorn, or my favorite roll of blunt, but make sure the children are in bed. Why? Because we have that vulgar sometimes but soul food conversations all the time prepare your mind to be fed like one up inhale life and exhale strife ladies and gentlemen once again you are tuned in to the discipline therapy podcast we're, we're here. here all right um as always we'd like to give joe from center stage music studio a big shout out if you guys need a place to record music podcast whatever it is center stage music in belmore is a place to go Also, if you'd like or want to check out our e-commerce store online, just go to disciplinetherapy.launchcart.store forward slash shop. We have a bunch of different categories. We have women's um, apparel, men's apparel, um, accessories, you name it. We have kids clothing, anything you need. We have for the computer, all that stuff. And last but not least, you can purchase one of um, or all of Mr. Discipline's seven published books they're on Amazon.com, uh, BarnesandNobles.com. They're also available for um, iPads and electrical, electrical, electronic, <laughs> electronic. <engine. laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. All right. Nervous. I do <laughs> that. See, when masculine is present, <laughs> how you feel? Which well, me? Oh, you <laughs> don't say I feel good. I feel great. Okay, yes, good. We'll get into it. So, are you done? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Laticia. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so she is a returning guest. She was hello. on the show prior as a um, caller. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Episode 94, season 10. It was... Um, oh. Who... Is it... Is, is this common, like, versus... Is like a versus. So, do men control their emotions more versus oh, oh, women control their emotions more versus men control their desires which is more one. um so now we actually have her in studio all the way from los angeles california Ooh, west coast <laughs> she's, she's visiting the east coast now she decided to, to coast. Hey. great I'm great excited. <laughs> so um you know, you did mention you were a chef and yes. you were an actress. Mm-hmm. So from then to now, what's been going on? Just it's it's picked up. It's picked up tremendously <gasps> to the point nice. where I feel like I, you know, have to better manage my time so that I can uh, remain sane through it all. But um, I've picked up more clients with I'm a personal chef. I love that. Um, so I picked up more that athletes um, oh. that I'm personally um curating meals for and uh, meal prepping for and then um i've booked commercials um i did maybe about three commercials last year that's awesome and then started the year off with two features which is i'm gonna need an autograph from you before you leave thank you very much (laughs) i want to say she was on my show first (laughs) right right. our show show. yeah your show (laughs) um but yeah no I'm, i'm definitely blessed um since then it's just you know it doesn't stop that is so awesome. Yeah. That's beautiful to hear. Yeah. And I know we were talking off camera about uh, mm-hmm. you being a chef. And yes. I said I'm a chef in my own mind, not classically <laughs> trained. But um, and you were saying and I was like, stop, because we have to do it on camera. Yeah. You were saying how much it, like you said, being an actress is, you know, it's, it's not like it's meant it's there mental. Mm-hmm. So being an actress um, like they, they both, I feel like, sort of live and can live in the same space. And, and especially like through work, like I've gotten to cook for a-listers you know like really celebrities that you know of and you know to work alongside them by like feeding their stomachs yeah feeding their souls but then also being on camera is is great um and like with acting it's so mental and emotional Mm. and i feel like with cooking it's it's 
physical, you know, more physical. I mean, acting could be physical too, but like cooking, it's like mental. I'm creating menus, I'm creating recipes, mm-hmm. I got to shop for the groceries. And then when I actually cook the food, you know, I'm putting my soul yeah. into it. You know, it's, and it it's, time it's transferring energy, you know, yeah. like I, I'm, I come from a Mexican culture. And so, you know, we, we love spicy food mm. and anytime that you make a salsa or something that is very spicy, they say, oh, you must have been upset. Mm-hmm. You must have been upset because exactly. it's spicy. You must have been hot. But like, I feel like part of cooking is, you know, you are transferring I agree. energy into your food and, you know, you receive that food. So mm-hmm. it's it's mental, emotional, also spiritual. physical, yeah. spiritual. I'm chopping. I've chopped my finger off. <laughs> <laughs> She's bled for you people, okay? I've bled. I've burns. <laughs> Maybe and not. It didn't scars. land in the food. Not in the though, food. <laughs> Maybe a nail or two. Maybe a nail or two. <laughs> this is crunchy. <laughs> I know. A piece of chicken bone or something. <laughs> no. um, um, so with acting, have <laughs> you done any like sex scenes? Jeez, let's just I, jump right up in it. I mean, we could talk about this when we go get. No, I like food. it. I like it. I like it, Mr. <laughs> Discipline. You're all up in. Let's go no. together. But no. if not, inquiring you minds want to know. Now. So I have not done. I have not done any sex scenes. Um, my first role was. Um, I had to. You know, I was playing like a mistress, and the opening scene, I had to make out with the, the with guy. the actor and. You know, I go for the audition and we rehearse it. And once we're on set, I meet the guy. It's like, oh, hi, you know, how are you? Nice to meet you. And the director comes over and goes, okay, you guys, you know, you guys met each other. Um, All right, act the scene. And then there, and then so we get to the kissing part and we just both kind of stand there and like, you know, and kiss, you know, there goes mm. the scene. And the, the director's like, what happened to the kiss? <laughs> really? I literally just met this guy five minutes ago. Yeah. And it's like, and we both looked at each other like, oh, okay, we have to kiss. And it was just so uncomfortable. Um, but it really is, you know, like you, I don't know, there's, it, it's really an art to it because there's no, yeah, even imagine. though you're like trying to, you know, portray an emotion, like when it comes to that part, there's no emotion in it. Like right, you're right. really just like, all right, we just got to kiss. Okay. And right, done. Right. And you just move on like nothing. We had a char- um, character, I was going to say, <laughs> shout out to Cradle. We had um, Wolfpack, a guest. Wolfpack. Yeah, Wolfpack. Cradle, he's an actor, is well, um, actor, mm-hmm. actress yeah. for women, actor for men. So he's an actor. So he kind of does similar what you do. And we were asking him, how did you immerse yourself into the character, bringing it alive? So we're going to get into this quick and then we're going to get into the topic. Um, personal morals and values and what makes you comfortable and what doesn't make you comfortable for the dollar. Mm-hmm. Have you like done it? Because right now you just said, damn, I just met him five minutes ago. I'm uncomfortable, like, rehearse, whatever it is. If um, sex scenes, you know, it's the money's good. Contract's done. Mm -hmm. Both parties are ready to go. The guy's like, oh, she's hot. (laughs) Let's go. Mm -hmm. He's good. Um, Like, what is that? Well, I definitely think you you have to have your morals in place. And I definitely think that the entertainment industry is a mixture of people that do have their morals and people that are morally just not questionable, (laughs) very Mm. questionable, especially with what's going on. I mean, in in the media, you know, right now you read about a lot of stuff. Yeah, Um, I think that um, for me, myself, like as long as like my intentions are in the right place, you know, but for me, it's an art. And if the other person is, you know, has whatever morals they have. Yeah, it, it does get uncomfortable. Luckily, I've never been in a situation where I feel like I have been uncomfortable, like acting or somebody hired me just to, you know, just because of my looks or, right. you know, whatever, just so, being on set. Did I you do it? Would I do it? Mm. I've actually turned down roles like I, I was offered a role last year. Um for and it the role was a stripper and there was sex scenes and it was it was one of the leads and they were offering me a certain amount of money and um and I said no mm. can I'm you, not gonna do yeah, it like but, can, but can you, you know what though? can you ask for like a like a body double you can like if the production is is big enough then, oh, so then yeah you can definitely yeah mm-hmm. I mean you have your but, contract but you know what though <laughs> like it's just entertainment though it's like entertainment. nothing's gonna happen. Right, like you, you could do that. Yeah, like and what, do do the stripper thing. Like it's entertainment, right? Like it's you just we portray things what we aren't in real life. It's mm-hmm. not a big deal, right? 
It's acting. It's art. Yeah, <laughs> I it's feel like acting, right? It's I not a like big deal, right? He's being sarcastic right now. He's, it's not a big deal, right? <laughs> I'm asking. For me, I object, it, Your Honor. For me, <laughs> leading. <laughs> He's leading the witness. He is. <laughs> um, for me, it depends. It, it depends what kind of project and and what you want to put out there. I definitely have struggled with, you know the idea of like, okay, do I want to put myself out there in that way? Would it like my family's going to see me and this and that. So um, I don't want to say like, I choose right. what roles I want to do because I don't think I'm, you know, there yet to like be able to choose. Right. And I think if you're an actor that you just do it for the love, right? I do, however, feel like those kind of roles are not for me. Mm. And, um, there's also like classy ways to, you know, yeah. to show it. Like if, yeah, exactly. if, there, if there's, you know, where it's insinuated that sex was being done or going to be done, right. you know, then I guess you can leave out altogether the sex scene, you yeah. know, let some, let the imagination, yeah. you know what I like mean? Like nothing so, raunchy, like we're just. Um, right. Or just like a bare back and you don't see the front of, yeah. of the girl. You know? yeah. I mean, there's ways to make it. To well, make I, it. I definitely want like a Julia Roberts, Sandra Bullock career, you know, even yeah. Longoria and they've gone through their career with, I mean, I think they obviously had scenes where mm -hmm. they did but nothing was shown and it was exactly. done in a very classy exactly you know way and those roles i i would do right there's a reason why they call um hollywood a moniker nickname holly weird <laughs> nobody is going to be in the field that you're in to the highest level without having to do something immoral so mm -hmm. with that being said yeah. Right. Eventually, will you kind of just be like, fuck it, I'm doing this or will acting like just be like, you know what, this is not my passion because you're doing like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. like, we've talked off camera. You're yes. doing a lot of things. Yes. Um, I'm not saying women can't do it, but it is difficult for women to multitask because they're used to giving their all. Mm -hmm into mm -hmm. like one thing mastering it so eventually i believe i could be wrong you're gonna choose one thing yeah absolutely i mean i i don't think you can successfully um excel in in something if your focus isn't there and i i think mm -hmm. me like I, I struggle with that like my focus is in so many different places so i'm sort of i'm not necessarily excelling in in this you know i'm excelling through like five different things mm. in its own way, but I'm not, you know, if I did focus on one thing, then then I could take that right, just all the that, way. So right. I know at some point I will have to, um, pick you know, one. pick one. Yeah, cool. Um, all right. But to can I say to answer your question, like like immorally, like I don't think I will ever do anything that will make me feel like uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Like I won't do anything that my soul and my spirit. Mm -hmm. doesn't feel right about so if i was offered a million dollars to you know do something i don't know that i would do it i'm gonna be honest i don't know that i would Mentiroso. <laughs> <laughs> maybe two million <laughs> who knows no <laughs> okay um so any questions before i get into the topic um the next time you come can can you make us uh, something yes yummy? yes that was, can you make us something that, that's what you said last time you did say on the that. show no way. Episode 94. My heart. My heart's broken right now because there's no food here. <laughs> Maybe afterwards? It means you have time to go shopping for some groceries. What do you want? Lasagna? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, all right, ladies, um, I have a topic. And I'm not just going to ask you guys the questions and exclude myself out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm fair. Strict, but fair. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the topic is, you ready? Mm -hmm. Ready. And the guest is going to go first. Uh oh. Mm hmm. <laughs> what are toxic traits or a toxic trait you find attractive or or that turns you on in the opposite sex? Ooh. Ooh. Um, Jill Scott said something once and it, it spoke to me and it's it's the way she said it. And she said, if you can tell me what to do, then you can tell me what to do. Mm. But if you can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> so I think um, what I find sexy is when the man is a little bit of an asshole to me and <laughs> okay. put, puts me in my place in a very like masculine 
way like not disrespectful you know right, don't right. get me wrong like if they're right. calling me out of my name now that's a whole different story but like when they put me in my place or mm-hmm. like when they're an asshole and they kind of move it's a little sexy and i think it's toxic because you kind of have that don't tell me what to do but i'm like oh you can't tell me what yeah. to do <laughs> um I agree, so I so i think i think you know being a little asshole maybe not treating me bad but like putting me in my place um, i think every woman understands what you're saying they're like oh yes yeah that's a definite i i know for me it's like i i don't feel like i i think maybe being ignored is also okay that's maybe toxic where i'm just kind of like what you're ignoring me but i love it i love you more <laughs> i love you more don't ignore me right. but why are you ignoring me well i'm gonna ignore you too but then it's like he hasn't checked on me yet yeah and then there's something there that you're like you don't want to deal with but but you deal with um, you're good and very honest i like it yeah, Those yeah. Are very honest answers yeah i don't know if a lot of if a lot of women would even admit would to that, that. Yeah. yeah i um i i feel like that's as far as i go with toxic like i don't really put up with a lot of toxic shit mm. um but those are the top that i can think of where i'm like it makes me want them more, and, you know, mm. more. And psychologically, that's the little girl in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. no. for, yes. for both. Yeah, for the both. Ignoring and the ignoring um, and putting you in your place. Yeah. Mm. So what part of the, what part of the little girl, like the, the putting me in my place? What, like yeah, I because was your never... father and your grandfather would do that. My mother would do that. Well, still, they're yeah. superior. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superior would do that. Mm. Um, so... I'm definitely going to take that first answer from her because, like I said, I think a lot of women are like, oh, yeah. I nah, like that stuff too. Nah, no, I got my own. Backing. I got my own, though. I got my own. <laughs> <Okay>. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> so I do. Um, I, I also like a little jealousy. Mm. I do enjoy that, mm. but not to the point of like everything's my fault because somebody smiled at me. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that, that kind of jealousy. No, thank you. But like the possessive type of jealousy, I, I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. I like... Um, so the toxic name would be cocky, but I like a man with a lot of confidence. Mm-hmm. That's super sexy for me. Somebody who like is just oozes confidence is nice. I guess it's like my whole thing of like being an asshole too. Yeah, right? like, but definitely not. Don't ignore me. That <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I, I don't like that shit. That'll be like okay, goodbye. You you get ignored. You say goodbye. <laughs> I get ignored. I'm like more 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 <laughs> you don't really want to ignore me come on no. mm-hmm. what you what's the toxic might, trait you like might be because of the also the zodiac signs between y'all two what's like Lou, pisces what leo you? usually like you're my sister yeah usually sister's leo. Leo. usually leo's because like three relatives are leo's my mom and my brother are born the same day mm-hmm. wow august 12th they're leo's and my sister's august, august 18. 18th yeah so they're Leos, dated some. Y'all like attention. Mm-hmm. So that, that's said, part mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's, I know. Yeah. That's part of that. Um, and then the, the Pisces, that makes sense. My father's a Pisces. Mm. But even my late grandmother was a Pisces. So it makes sense to what you're saying. I dated some Pisces too. <laughs> so they're kind of more like, yeah, I'll give my all. But if this is not being done, I don't have a problem walking away. Mm-hmm. yeah um so toxic traits for me it's really hard <laughs> i was about to, be to honest. say this is going to be interesting because i can't picture you liking any toxic, toxic traits. It's, <laughs> it's really really hard um would you guys consider clinginess toxic i think so i don't because i like my women i like i actually like i actually like my women to be um obsessed with yeah. me like okay. i don't like like let's say i'm texting her why is she taking five hours to text back that's mm. gonna bother me mm-hmm. but is it like toxic if i wanted to like be obsessed like text me back now that that's toxic like text that i my now. my part it's toxic <laughs> on my part or her side um i think it's great to be obsessed over the person i think i think there's a part um of you, there's balance and everything yeah and we talked about this so it's great to be obsessed but you also need that time to like for yourself really yeah. you know you can't be you could be all about a person but you got to mm-hmm. be all about yourself too yeah so so with the obsession it's mo- mainly about her giving her all to me mm. not in a sense like crazy obsession 
You know, because there are crazy obsessions, oh, right? She's yeah. like popping up at my crib Killing to make sure I'm there, yep. calling me. Oh, I Slashing called you. Your tires. Yeah. I called you and you didn't pick up the phone. Yeah. You know, I'm at work. Uh, where, what are you doing? Are you with somebody else? Like, no, that's, I don't even think that's obsession. Yeah, no, that's like, crazy. I don't, that's like jealousy, crazy insecurity. Yeah, yeah. that's awful. And immaturity. So I don't like that. I don't yeah. like that part either. So I wouldn't say, oh, woman being jealous, women fighting over me. No, I don't like that because that's masculine. So anything that a woman is doing masculine is turning me off. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only thing I could think of. Is them being obsessed, obsessed. with you? Obsessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that- if that's toxic, then I like that. <laughs> He's like, I love it, actually. I think the toxic part would be the jealous, the where you at, like, why don't you answer? And you usually, it takes, takes you 10 minutes to get home, and today it took you 12 minutes. That's dominant. That's crazy. <laughs> like, that's a woman that's, being dominant, though, because she's, like, checking me. That's yeah. cool. like, interrogating me. I'm already, yeah. I'm, like, quick to shut down. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not even going to answer her. I'm going to read a text. Who she thinks she's talking to? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll call her back tomorrow. Yeah. Or to reply back to Ma, make her even more mad. <laughs> I was about to say that. Yeah. You know what I'm crazy. saying? Like, it's like, that's yeah. the asshole now. Like, it's like punishment. Mm-hmm. So, in a way, I'm... like, yeah, like, that's probably the only thing I could think of. I'm not into um, a woman being aggressive. Right. You know, da 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 you don't do this. You don't dress like that. What about a woman being cocky? No, those are turn offs. Oh, how interesting. You know, so I believe the feminine. But not with some, you. The like submissive like, woman is humble. Now, if yeah. she's cocky, like uh, like outside, like, for example, we'll use you, right? Because you're a chef. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you're, they're like, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm the best chef in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do that, girl. Think like that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know what you do with esthetician and how you are at the hospital. I'm the best at this. Mm-hmm. I actually train people. Okay, that's cool. But when she's coming into your dynamic, being like challenging and oh i could do this better than you i'm a better cook than you and what yeah yeah not like yeah. that just like in, right. in regular life like when yeah. when i say i like a man who has confidence or is cocky not with me like don't try to i'm i'm your we're not competing we're, yeah, yeah we're me not and you as partners not you know yeah. don't compete with me but yeah. outside of me like i like for people to be like yeah. damn look at him so definitely right not cocky um it's not a lot man <laughs> i, I, like, I i'm, I'm not your stuff. average guy that's true you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My mentality, my energy. I'm not your average guy. Some guys might say, oh, I like a woman who's a little bit crazy because she's going to bring that in the bedroom. I'm running. I'm <laughs> running as fast as I can. Yeah. And I'm not looking back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So the moment you tell me stuff like, oh, well, we need a little crazy in the relationship to balance it. I'm running <laughs> because I'm thinking mm-hmm. to myself, Mm-mm, she likes chaos. It's about to happen soon. <laughs> She's just being on her best behavior right now. <laughs> it's going to happen soon. It could be during an argument. Mm. So I'm, I'm like, I look at the little things that are red flags that can turn bigger because I'm a psychic. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and my I'm powerful, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if a woman's already telling me that. It's as a Scorpio, you're going to be obsessed with things. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to start thinking it. Damn, is she like this? And it might manifest into reality Mm. because I'm that powerful. So she shouldn't even tell me that. You work on yourself. Hold yourself accountable. You used to be like that. Just try to change while you're here. Mm -hmm. Well, toxicity is also like like part of like emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I feel like like the older you get and like the more emotion intelligent you get, like toxicity is like immaturity in a sense you know and i think um like i know before when like i never argued you know when i was younger in relationships and i get into my first relationship and i argue and it's almost like somebody could see you at your worst and they still love you Mm -hmm. and you can talk shit to somebody and and they'll still be there for you it's kind of like well i could tell you whatever i want you know but that's like an immature way of thinking because really like you shouldn't communicate in in a negative way. in that in a negative way and there are times where like you know it's in you it comes out sometimes where you like get out of character or you yell or whatever and and the person has to have the emotional intelligence to, to be calm like you down. nah yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's you ain't true. gonna yell here yeah and that's you gotta probably be like, where the okay <laughs> where him putting you in your place comes <laughs> exactly in. Yeah. this is what I'm saying it's like I do I I need to be put in my place yeah. sometimes you know I think we all do mm-hmm. but it's how you put me in my place yeah it's the daddy like if you say yo shut the fuck up and I'm, I'm gonna be like don't tell me to shut the fuck up right but if you're like I need you to calm down right now. I'll be like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Daddy. That's true. Yes, daddy. Like, yep. You see, it's yeah. still like yeah. the daddy um, I read something. Concept. I read something that says um, 
There's nothing, there's nothing sexier than a man, well, not really, I guess not a man, but that's how I took it, a person who remains calm in every situation. Oh, yeah. That's sexy. Oh, yeah, yes. that's sexy. Yeah. Because he's going to calm the whole room. Yeah. Like, so, you don't need to add fire with the fire, exactly. right? You need the, that person that's going to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's hard Bring to find. Bring it down. It is. It's, it's hard to find. It's a high valuable asset to have. Yeah. Um, so if you were a man, would you date you? And I'm going to say, like, if I was a woman, would I date me? So guess go first. If you were a man, Leticia, would you date you? Yes. A uh, thousand percent. <laughs> Stop lying. Stop lying. I'm lying. Why I'm would you lying. date you? I would date me because I like to think that I'm the perfect balance of a lot of okay. things. Okay. I'm I'm supportive. I am open to always grow. I'm always looking um, for, I'm always looking for like the best in, in a person. I give people, I don't believe in um, like anybody not deserving anything, you know, even if, if they're acting out of character. So I always feel like, you know, you do give chances because nobody's perfect. And mm-hmm. like, you know, in, with that um, being said, I, I like to look at like the good in people. And so I think that in a just relationship, that's hard to find. Mm. Do you think you would have those same qualities if you were a man? No, I think if I was a man, I think I'd be like very. <clears throat> um, what do you mean? Like, like if I was a man, so if I, do you have siblings like who are male? I do. How do they act? Um, Y'all are raised the same, right? We were, you know, you, we were actually like my, my brother is very like all about his woman. He's all about his woman and like whatever my wife says and like whatever my wife wants. And, um, he's a good leader. He's a good father. He's a great father. And, but he is very submissive to his wife. So he's got, I was about to say that he's kind of beta. He's beta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you don't do like beta guys. I like, it, would you like to find a guy that's like your brother? Definitely not. <laughs> I would love to find a guy I, I that's like my brother, but he can't be too. No, I, I don't think I do well with with beta. I, I would need like an alpha man because, like I said, like I think I believe in balance. Like mm-hmm. you can't be too alpha. You can't be too beta. You got to be like in the middle or like at least have moments. Um, yeah, you got it. You got to be soft, but you got to be tough. I mean, it's it's hard. <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's hard it's to find. Balance for a reason, so people. like when they're too soft, yeah, it's like I love it and I could live here and and this is great. And then, but at the same time, you know, I don't know that adventurous part of me, like the the lion inside of me that like needs a little excitement, mm. is kind of like um, like. I need a little fight. <laughs> I, I need a little know. masculinity. A little masculine baby. masculinity. Um, yeah, but no, I I would date myself just because I feel <laughs> like I'm I I will support you and I show up for you. I show up for my people and I give a hundred percent in everything. I support people mm-hmm. um, even more than like I I would show up for myself, which you know it's it's something that I gotta um, you know work on, but. But yeah, who wouldn't want to have a partner that will be there that will support you and just yeah, rides for you? 100%. Like, I think that's the main thing. Like, I will ride for you. Like, let's. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't, don't ride? A lot of people don't want that. Don't want don't. somebody that's going to ride for you? Yeah. What do they want? What would they. What, what would they. Yeah, they what, what would they be build separate. For? A lot of people today, especially modern, want to build separate. Like, it, that's mm-hmm. like a rare commodity. Like, people don't value rare today. Hmm. right they don't know how they like something that's healthy versus toxic they gravitate towards toxic more healthy makes them feel weird so they kind of don't not know how to identify that versus not treating it right hmm. so like i'm just telling you the truth it, it back in the days that would make sense mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like the, the ride or die good girl like everybody every man would want that but nowadays see mm-mm. that's beautiful I, you're you're yeah. a rare gem Late, they, <laughs> Men, gentlemen. But, hello. So, I feel, I feel though, like like that's how they move. But like people aren't awake, and I think deep down, like 
at the end of the day, you do want somebody that that's going to be there. You do want to feel like you're not alone. And I think that's that's the main thing when you're looking for like a partnership. You just you just just knowing that you have someone that will always have your back. Like you you mm-hmm. could you could be the worst person in the world and you can cheat and you can, you know, be badly to your partner, but like in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, I'm doing this that's messed up, but like I got somebody at home mm-hmm. that loves me and that's waiting for me. You know, so they could they could say, you know, they don't want that. They right. can but even build the their stuff. But deep down, like subconsciously, like they're moving Everybody that way because that. in their mind, they're like, I know I got somebody and maybe that's mm. a cockiness or whatever. But I do think everybody wants that deep down. Mm. Yeah, everybody wants love. Everybody wants love. love. They don't want to admit it, but it's real. <laughs> yeah. Um. So <laughs> would I date me? I would date me now. Maybe not when I was younger because I had hella toxicity going on. Then. But now, <laughs> hell yeah, I would date me now. Why would I date me now? Um, I just happen to write it down, people. Okay. <laughs> <Let's say. laughs> let, let me copy what you wrote. <laughs> I would date me because I'm a great listener, no matter what the situation is. So, like, if you're happy and excited about something, I'm going to be listening to all your excitement. I'm going to celebrate with you. I'm going to celebrate you. If you're sad and, and you're depressed, I can be that ear to just let you vent. Or I can help you find that silver lining. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always, um, help uplift you. I'll let you see, I, I will show you the best parts of you Mm. and I'm very attentive. Like Mm. I'm attentive to if you're sad, if you're happy, if you're any little thing that's off, I'm, I'm super attentive. So I'll know how to take care of, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be my best friend, my sister, my kids, my, my boyfriend, whoever, my parents, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to be attentive. To, to in order to meet who you know the people in your life to meet their needs and attentive doesn't mean clingy <laughs> that's right it don't mean clingy okay. or does it <laughs> so hey's handwriting is great <laughs> it's like it's so like a doctor it's like yeah like it's a like a doctor <laughs> this is my quick handwriting it's so nice like, you, i could tell that you're lying because no, no, i don't no, even no, like no, this handwriting nice. my handwriting is really nice it's just not now <laughs> it is it is it's like perfect <laughs> So would I date, date me? You? No. This is going to be interesting. Oh, okay, why no. not? No. Because I'm looking at this as if I was to be a woman tomorrow. With how you think now. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that means I'm going to be a female Scorpio, and female Scorpios crave control. Yep. I know they could lie I know and be like, oh, I'm different. <laughs> control could come in manipulation too. Gaslighting, mm. crying, tears. You would do all you that? Know, re, like not receiving, kind of like pushing you away. That's control. Guard up. Control. Um, so I know my sign like to a T, men and women. Mm. So Scorpio men and Scorpio women, I know them to a T. So if I was a Scorpio woman tomorrow, I wouldn't date me because I would want control. So if I'm bringing certain rules, principles, and values because I do that when I'm dating someone, even my family, I hold them accountable. Even the coworkers that work under me, I hold them accountable. So pretty much everybody in my circle, business partners, I hold them accountable significant other they might have a problem with that i know i'm gonna have a problem if i admit it i never been able to have a successful relationship with a scorpio woman because they crave control Mm. so that's kind of like a mirror however if we wanted to do some business shit oh yeah we could dominate the world Mm. (laughs) you know what i'm saying but on an intimate um relationship it's gonna bother me to just always take the back seat Mm, so it'll be a lot of conflict between you and a female one. Yes. Mm. So I don't want to pick on the female Scorpios, just in general mm-hmm. of dom- dominant women or masculine women. So I'm looking at it as if I was a woman tomorrow, I'm taking everything with me and bringing with that woman, I'm going to be a masculine woman. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be about the bag. I'm going to be this strong independent. So I'm going to look at a guy like me and just be like, no, you're trying to control me here. That's why you have rules. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because like that sense, I'm going to be out of my nature. Yeah. The woman that is in her nature is more docile. She's going to like appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at it as, okay, if I was a direct mirror of me, but a woman version, I wouldn't date me because there are certain things I want to control that he's going to have a problem with. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Well, I didn't but, take but it as if is, I was a Pisces is, guy. I just took it as if any guy, as like a as a per, would somebody want to date me? And that's fine. I'm looking at it on my oh, lens. I wouldn't so, date a Pisces guy, though. Yeah, so my lens is 
if I'm a woman with all of these things that I know, I'm going to have a problem with the certain rules and uh, principles. However, I might just say, I want to have fun with you because I know you're going to give me good sex. I know you're going to give me fun. But I don't think I could be in a relationship with you because you're going to try to control a lot of the things I do. Mm. And I'm used to having control. I dominate dudes. Pause. I'm not saying that <laughs> I do that. I'm just speaking as if I was a woman. You uh, know what I'm saying? You, you. So I wouldn't date me in the totality. It'd be like, oh, yeah, he's fun. But because he's like this, and there's probably women who have said this. They talking in the screen watching the show. Oh, he's definitely somebody I would fuck. He looked like he got good dick. <laughs> but I would not. But things that he likes as a woman, don't you know that don't work today? We ain't in the 1950s. Mm. So there's actually more modern women today than there are traditional. The traditional mm -hmm. ones are kind of hiding. They're happy. They're on their knees with their husbands. They're serving them. <laughs> it's the modern women who are loud and out there now. So the most, most likely, <laughs> most likely I'm going to be like a modern chick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be like, nah, I'm not going to be with somebody that's going to try to like hold this down. So I got to be with a submissive guy. Mm. because i want to be the leader here you see the difference mm -hmm. most most women like this are masculine so they're gonna like even though i won't respect them and be attracted to them but i could like have fun here at least you know what i'm saying and do what i want it's like manipulation mm. so if i was a woman tomorrow would i date me no in that sense because of the control aspect we would have a power struggle but mm. in a sense of oh yeah he's gonna take care of me but i don't need a man to take care of me i'm self-sufficient so i don't need that you see how the woman is talking as this um he's gonna hold the door why would you do that don't worry about it i do that already pay bills i make money though so no just show up there with that dick pause you know what i'm saying no homo show up there with that dick and just be like a companion or whatever maybe once a week <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm busy. Friends with benefits. I'm busy all day. Friends with benefits. That's the friends with benefits guy because his standards are too high. When you talk to him about submission, they look at it on a sense of one aspect. Oh, yeah, I've been submissive. Cooked clean. Suck my man's dick. Pause. Oh, my Lord. I mean, yeah, that's what he's talking about. But when they actually see that, it's like, oh, no, you got to bring emotional intelligence. Oh, no, you got to bring peace. Oh, no, you got to bring, like, security within yourself. Oh, no, you got to support. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, uh, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I got a lot of shit going on with me. I can't even be present in my whole life. <laughs> you want me to pre be present for you? Mm -mm. Maybe in a couple of years. <laughs> you see, so I wouldn't date me in that aspect. So I'm looking at it on a sense of even like as a man. And I met like me because I don't believe in power couples. If I met a woman identical to me, it would be the same thing. But but what about like regular women? Do you would do you think that regular women like would hmm What's regular you, women to you? Like not a masculine woman. Like a regular woman, would you would you think if you were a regular woman, would you want to date a man like you? Yeah. Ah, pues, no, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> because like there's the balance. Right. right? So why would you want to date a, a man like you? Everything you that I mentioned, traditional. So that one word, traditional, just encompasses is gonna, everything. Is gonna come with everything that the woman is biologically built to be attracted to and want. So you're going to get the provider. You're going to get the protector. You're going to get the calm. You're going to get the person that's going to elevate you, teach you, guide you, hold you accountable. Lead you. Lead you. Mm -hmm. The divine masculine mm -hmm. is the traditional man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get all of that. And to be honest, I'm a guy that could take any woman and transition her. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the alpha... Or the masculine women are a little bit more difficult, but they can transition as well. It's just they're difficult because it's hard for them to remain consistent. It's like women are creatures of habit. When they've been doing something for so long, certain triggers will get them back. So it's mm. hard. They still submit, but they're the ones that struggle with consistency. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a problem for me because I'm 24-7 dumb. So that's why it wouldn't work with a masculine woman. Mm-hmm. 
But the woman who's regular, yeah, maybe once in a while she gets out of character. Yo, hey, lower your tone. She quickly does it. You put her in her place. The woman who's masculine, hey, lower your tone. She gets defensive and now wants to fight more. Mm. So now it's going to come to a point where now I'm going to be out. Because mm-hmm. the, the balance is not there. Right. We're both on an alpha and alf- both alphas don't work right. until somebody submits. So in a sense of the regular woman or, or any woman, I could take her. The OnlyFans, whatever, porn star, hoe, whatever you want to say, doing bad shit out there, hood chick. I could transition all of them. It's just there's certain pride and ego and stubbornness with me that makes those women disqualified. So I won't overlook that. Mm. Yeah, I could change the OnlyFans chick, but she already disqualified herself. Because I, she had OnlyFans. I, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going to put myself through that. It's mm. an embarrassment. Mm. I will not take her under my wing and transition her, mm. especially if she's well known. We're going to go out to some spot and, hey, let me get your autograph. Dude, dude, <laughs> I'm with my girl. Relax. But, dude, I've seen a pussy online. Can, can, can I just get one? Click? <laughs> and it's going to come to a point where one or two things happen a, phys- a physical altercation. Or I'm just going to be beta and just let it happen. Yeah. So how much Bad. disrespect mm-hmm. publicly will a guy tolerate? Yeah. Not just behind closed doors. So that's like, I could change any woman, but there's certain women I'm just like, mm, you have to qualify for this type of God. Mm-hmm. You got to qualify. She, ain't, she, she might be intelligent, but we ain't going to get that far. Right. I'm judging a book by its cover. You shouldn't do that. I will, and everybody else will. Mm -hmm. So we ain't going to get that far. So I'm overlooking. And maybe that could have been a connection because her father wasn't around and she needs this male mentor who's like a father figure Mm -hmm. to help her get there. But it ain't because I'm not willing to. It's going to hurt me in my heart to try to overlook. I'm not going to be able to fake it. Damn, you done this? And there'll be certain conversations that will bring that up. Uh, it will be a conversation anywhere. A guy could say, shit, now I remember what she was doing. And it, and it constantly hurts you. Mm. It's too much like I can't put my pride into my ego aside for that. Mm. that. That's what it is, though. Like, I feel like it is. I have mixed feelings about that because I agree with a, a lot of what you're saying. Um, it's also like I know people that have been with, you know, porn stars or that are in relationships with strippers. And it's and they, they're like, it's the best relationship because there's a there's a freedom there and like you definitely have to get to a point where you don't let your ego get in the way you don't let your pride get in the way and you don't care what people think because at the end of the day it's it's whatever like your reality is right like because it's subjective also is like, like, can i ask you a question are these men that are dating men yes the porn stars yes and the strippers yes oh so men Good. yeah these men they don't care that yeah she she did born but you know that's just her job she made money she she's not doing it anymore and it's the best relationship that i've been in mm-hmm. well, i know some what. some um lawyers you know obviously women lawyers uh, you know especially back in the days they used to strip because they needed to put themselves through college because they didn't have anything else i'll mm-hmm. tell you why they don't care because the men yeah rea- reality is they're not emotionally available they might tell you what they believe, you know what I'm saying, what it is or whatever. Oh, man, I mean, I don't got to teach her anything in the bedroom. And sex is like one of the biggest catalysts to connection. Mm-hmm. So I don't got to teach her stuff in the bedroom. Like mm-hmm. she just naturally will do that versus me training somebody. But the reality is a god or a king is not going to do that. He's not going to be happy doing that. I promise you, I'm telling you the truth, not my perspective. Those guys are not in their divinity. That's it. So, yeah, it could work because maybe he's into porn. Maybe he's into pegging too. Pause. Baby, it's your turn. Stick something back there. So he's kind (laughs) of iffy himself. He'll go the other way, given the opportunity. Yeah, but don't you think that if if it's somebody that did something back, you know, back in in, in the day. So the reality is, by nature... By nature, ladies and gentlemen, men are possessive and territorial Mm. by nature. So the reality is the man that is like, oh, she's currently still doing that. I don't really care. He's lying. He's not a real man. He's not in his divinity. That's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. He's not in his divinity. 
Right, yeah, but you're talking about somebody that's dealing with a, a a person that's doing that currently. Currently, right. Well, what if it's somebody that, let's say, was like how she said they were in that industry, but they're not anymore. They were there for a specific time for a specific reason, and now that they reached what their goal was, they're no longer in you know in that industry. It it really depends. Like me, I'm the guy. I'm a conversationalist. So if I dated a woman like that, I'm gonna ask her an array of questions. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna ask her, how long were you doing that? Mm -hmm. because that's also going to let you know what she's done. Because if you did that for a long duration of time, what if you went, like, have you done champagne rooms? Mm. Because some some strippers will fuck for money. Oh, that's what the champagne room is? They don't just strip. I thought it was just that, you know, you had champagne in that. (laughs) They don't just strip. So now I'm going to ask those type of questions too. Have you done that? Because, yeah, you're right. So you might be put in certain circumstances. Parents passed away. You know what I'm saying? I need quick money or whatever to go do what I got to do. Dude left me with a kid, infant. You know what I'm saying? Nothing else I could do. But in that moment, it's like, yo, did you utilize it? Just like a straight dude, are you fucking making money to be fly? Are you trying to pay for college? That's what I'm saying. Are you trying to do this to invest in this to make dividends to get into the corporate world? So if you are doing that, that's going to let me know, oh, no, she ain't got morals. She was just doing this for dad. She didn't just say, oh, I was doing this to feed my son or my daughter and pay for this. Because I'm telling you, if she's doing it for those reasons, there are certain things that she's not going to do. The guy that's like, yo, I'll give you $500 right now. Let's go in the champagne room. I don't do that. Ask the other chick. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. she knows why she's doing it for, and she That's probably only, wouldn't even flaunt it on or put it on her. That on her will page. be the only exception. exception. But I'm gonna yeah. ask her questions to make a trip, so she's not gonna be able to hide shit from me. And I'm gonna know, okay, she did this shit immorally. Bye. And I'm gonna know, I'm gonna know, because I'm gonna ask her so much questions that's gonna make her trip up. And if and if she's telling the truth, she's not gonna trip up. Exactly. Even if I ask the same question different ways, it's the same answer. Mm-hmm. It's true. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, I'm going to ask questions. So it's a rare situation where you meet a guy like mm-hmm. me who's going to ask. So if I meet a woman, it's like, hey, you know, I got like 20 bodies, 30 bodies. I'm not leaving right away. We kind of connected before you told me that. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not leaving right away. Now I'm going to ask you an array of questions. Okay, why were you doing this? <laughs> Is sex a sport to you? You out here like a man. Um... Did you have your father around? What type of mentorship? Like, what did you get out of doing this stuff? Were you drugged up? Was it a train? Like, I'm going to ask her so much questions like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Can I ask one question at a time? A lot of men are not doing that. So it's a rare situation you're going to get with a man who's going to really be so compassionate to a point where it's like, yeah, I'm going to forget about her past. You meet these other guys who really are... More in their alpha, but still toxic. They're not in their divinity. They're not a masculine man. They're going to just be like, oh, you did this? Maybe I'll play with her if she's good looking Mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Or I know for a fact I'm passing her by. Yeah. The man like me is going to get certain things. Because if I'm looking at a woman's page and I see that it's clean, that's going to be like, "Mm mm-mm, I ain't leaving right away. I got to find out why. What happened? Hmm. You see, because it's it's like it's trickery. Mm-mm. It's trickery. Like you're 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 now vulnerable with me because social media will never know this about you mm. because it's, it's hidden. Mm-hmm. But and now if you tell me, I'm going to be like, well, why did you do it? I'm going to find out. Are you currently in this mindset? Right. You see, because at the end of the day, men can say what they want, but it's very hard that you're going to find a virgin today in America. Right. So most likely you're going to have a woman that has a couple of bodies on her belt. But but me, I'm all about like, because I don't ask body count. I'm all about the fucking byproduct. <clears throat> I'm all about like, why were you doing this? Because this is a, this is a byproduct of something. Why were you doing this? And where are you at now? That's That's me. Yeah. I feel like there's like well nowadays since like women empowerment is is you know at its at its highest like everyone's in their masculine energy and there's almost a sense of of like um like rawness about sleeping with a lot of men about you know being a porn star because they just enjoy sex, sex. Mm. like it's it's not cuz I got to I just really love 
sex and this is why I'm doing it. And, you know, but on top of me loving sex, like I do want to be with one person and, um, and you know, if their head's in the right place, there, there's a part of that, that is a turn on to some men. And they're like, mm. you know, there's th this yeah. woman who's like having sex with all these, and she's real about it. And there's a part of her being real about it that the men will be like, this is a real ass woman right the here. The simpish you know? mentality. Okay. No, not not a real man. The simpish mentality. A male, not a man. Man okay. is divine. So a male who's just thinking with his dick, simpish mentality as well, and simpish energy. Yes, absolutely absolutely he's gonna just be like oh yeah you know i'm gonna check it. she was straight up about it and stuff of that nature mm -mm. not a man who's in his divinity because god is in him he's gonna question you he's gonna question your nature and i don't care how we were connecting if you told me that's why you were doing it yeah i just did it because i love sex that's a problem down the line because when i don't give her sex for a week she's gonna act up you see how it comes back full circle I that's why I always challenge the dudes with the double-edged sword question. The woman with the 50 bodies or the two bodies with a kid? The woman with the 50 bodies doesn't have a child. A lot of men are going to take the woman mm. without the child because it's the child that's the cornerstone. But they're not reading in depth. How present will she be, though? Will you tolerate cheating even if it's to your face? I won't. Mm. But will you take that because she don't have the kid and you could build with her? Hmm. down the line she's gonna ask you for a divorce you see and now you and now it's like it's kind of like why'd you do it anyways you know that you weren't supposed to go in that street because it said yo don't go there there's a lot of bumps in the road and 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 potholes or whatever it is take this route nah this is the fun route though this is the benefit route this is the route that i could just start my own journey with and i'm using that analogy now you're going fast in that road and now you have punctured tires, axle, uh, uh, sp uh, um, uh, springs, all fucked up because you were going in that route. Meanwhile, going the other route, you know what I'm saying? That's like, yeah, it's a little familiar, but it's safer and it's more durable and the principles and values are there. I guess yeah. that, that makes sense. That that makes sense. Like a lot of men lead with it's the sex. That's it's like whatever is important to you. So yeah, it does make yeah. sense. Like the more acceptance is yeah. when they're not yeah. morally. So a woman preaching okay. I'm a traditional good woman is not attractive to a lot of men because they're gonna be looking at it like, well, let me correct myself. I'm not attracted to a lot of males. Then be looking at it like, well, damn, she never did anything bad. She a goody two shoes, boring. She probably a virgin. I don't want to deal with that because I'm not a trainer. Like, I'm not training nobody to please me. Yeah. Uh-uh. I need a woman that's fully equipped already, fully loaded Lamborghini. I'm not taking that sports car and fixing it up. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. You that's see? Sports. Not a lot of men are willing to do the other thing. A yeah. man who's in his divinity is going to appreciate that because that's a rare commodity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's in the world that we are in today. That's like the problem, what we're absorbing. So I'm able to pick up on traditional and modern. And when I'm dating <clears throat> women going out there and talking to them, I'm able to like decipher mm. because I'm in my divinity. So it's quick based off her mindset, based off what she's absorbing, based off how active she is on social media. <laughs> I could tell what she, what she falls under. <laughs> Friends she has around her, relationship types. I could tell where. It is mm -hmm. easy. Okay. And she could lie and say, no, I'm really submissive in the traditional woman. Mm -mm. You know what I'm doing? What? I'm studying to see if her actions match her words. Mm. And she's not going to be able to fool me because I'm in my divinity. Mm -hmm. The man who is it, he don't get fooled. And he's going to be like, that's the guy you talk about. That's like, oh, yeah, you know, she did this, with this and that. She's real. Boom, 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 takes it. And then down the line. There's a lot of shit that's fucked up that occurs in that relationship. She's going to be the one complaining more. Mm -hmm. So what happens often is women kind of run away from these traditional good men, dominant gentlemen who are in their divinity because they feel like, yo, I'm going to have to self-improve and I don't want to do that. Ego and pride is in the way. The guys that are beta, they get with them, but they're actually more at risk for danger. That's why they don't understand and nobody teaches that.
They're actually at risk for more danger with those guys because they're not thinking about the future. The man that is inadequate and unwilling to lead in a dynamic is dangerous for the woman. Mm. You said unwilling, unwilling to lead? Yeah. Unwilling to lead is yep. dangerous for the woman. Yeah. Because the woman is not built to be a leader. She's loyal to her emotions. So most likely she's going to make a lot of emotional decisions. And to make mm -hmm. good decisions in life, you need to be logical. Mm -hmm. So that's me breaking it down on that aspect of them getting with those type of men. The reality is, it's what the woman settles for. If it was up to her, she would be with the dominant masculine gentleman man. Mm. She would be with that guy because it's in her DNA. She's hardwired. I wrote that in my first book, The Seduction of Discipline. Mm. Available chapter out there, chapter 13, Power. It's yeah. in her DNA. She's hardwired to be attracted to that guy because it's not just, well, it's sexual arousal. Mm -mm. It's my needs are going to be met here. The biggest thing, number one thing he's most likely going to bring to the table is protection. And that's what's like rare that a lot of people don't talk about. The irony about that guy that's accepting and doing all that stuff, he's not, he's not protection there. He's mm -hmm. scary. My nervous system is up. Yeah, I might be able to control stuff. Fun, fun, fun. She's going to get older eventually and be more logical when she gets older and rational and realize that she made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because of all the shit that he going to put her through. That's a fact. So, what is the most valuable thing or things you bring to the table? But I thought we did that. Well, I guess the, the I guess the other one was, d didn't I say why I was so, you know, why I would date me? All those things. That's why no, I'm no, so no. valuable. <laughs> no, I'm no. joking. I'm joking. Okay. The most valuable thing. That I, you bring to the table for somebody else, a business, a business partner, a group of people, the world. I would say, I would say my kindness. Okay. I would I like say my it. kindness. So. Um, the way I uplift you. Okay. Me, leadership. Nice. And I can yeah. bring that anywhere I go. Family, uh, a significant other, business, relationships, no matter what it is. I don't, I could be in a corporation and then leave, leave and go to another corporation. Only thing I need to know is the operations. I bring leadership here. Oh, you good at this? You good at this? You're in this position. Oh, you do cashier? You in the fitting room? Bang, 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 bang. I put everybody in the positions of power. We got one goal. So a person who's not like, that's the most valuable asset, a leader who's natural because he don't need to know a lot of stuff, like even like learning a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Like I talk about self-taught off camera about all this. And then I taught Sue. This, I ain't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but a leader is going to take it upon himself. Oh, I'm going to study this and I'm going to master it. That's what a leader will do. So that is actually a very valuable asset to not just a relationship, but the world. Yeah, that, that's definitely, I think, I think that should be the most valuable thing that men mm -hmm. in general should, should bring to the table. That's also I, an attractive quality too. Yes. Yep. I would say for me, kindness, like, I mean, any, anybody, not anybody could be a leader, but, you know, when you're looking to, um, like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about just in general to the world or are we talking about in a relationship? You, you talking about yourself though. Right. Like you you kind of like feeling like you're going to challenge my, um, value, valuable asset. No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. So you bring you. kindness. No. So you bring, um, elevation. elevation and I bring leadership. So we're the perfect three. <laughs> <laughs> so when you talk about like for me as far as being a leader leaders are adequate leaders are bringing everything to the table mm -hmm. they are um leading by example they are compassionate because they put themselves in the other person's shoes a leader is gonna think for the team mm -hmm. okay you, you can't put toxicity and leader in this they're not interchangeable they can't put them in the same I mean. mm -hmm. no they're not I'm They're just not. saying Biden it, is the leader of this country and he's toxic. He's really not, though. Conspiracy theory? No, he's a puppet. Well, so I'm just paper. saying. I'm just saying. But you, I wouldn't consider him a leader. But the whole rest of the world does. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, like Trump. So a true leader like yourself, yes. But an appointed leader, no. He doesn't have the best yeah, interest. Yeah. So a natural leader. Excellent. Um, what were you going to say? 
I lost my train of thought. I do that to women. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. What is your highest valuable asset for yourself now? Like not even the world Ooh. relationship or whatever, just for yourself. Um, accountability. Nice. I like it. Accountability. Okay. So. Um, being genuine. Being genuine. Yeah. Oh Lord! Now he's gonna say, "Why okay. something's popping into his head?" Okay. No, no. What do you mean? I know you want to say I'm, something. I'm just, I know it. Okay, so that's over. Okay, well, you're, okay. So, oh yeah, yeah. I ask for yourself. Yeah. So you believe? Yes, I'm real. No matter what. I'm genuine. I, go. I have to be genuine with myself, myself. first and foremost. Okay. All right. Um. I saw this thing. I said my biggest flex is I show up as myself every time. Okay. And yours was once again accountability. Okay, accountability. I like it. Right now. You mm. said tomorrow, right now. Tomorrow could be something. You else. said right now. Mm. So right okay. now, that the, for me, I think that is my like. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Because I've I'm right now. I hold myself accountable for where I am right now and and what relationships I've entertained and you know. But and that's like through work, through mm -hmm. just what across the board and like I'm self reflecting like and taking accountability for. You okay. know where I am now. That's great because not a lot of, especially women. I and know they say that women can't. can't you know, but they, look we, at you, yeah, that's awesome. I'm me too. Me proof. too. I was forced we, into right. learning women how to do that. Women can't what? Take they accountability. Say, yeah, that we like it kills us to take accountability. You guys right? never did. You just <laughs> even said right now, so you didn't have it back then. It's something that you right. Had it's something to that adopt. we have to learn, right, yeah. and get used so to. So women normally don't have accountability. Yes. Mm -hmm. We take care of women. We baby them, even as babies. Mm -hmm. I told I yeah, said there's this, a difference. I said this in the show how I hold my little niece accountable. The mm -hmm. glass. I told you don't do that. Now go clean it. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that. Oh, she spilled the milk. No problem. I'll just take care of it. Always cleaning her mess. Even I... as an adult, you wiping her ass for her. <laughs> oh metaphorically. Metaphorically, wiping her ass for her. So she never takes accountability. And the prettier they are, the less accountability they have. Now. If they meet certain men, if they meet certain women or in certain situations where they like, oh, yeah, you know what? I reflect. They get into their divinity and now they have accountability. Yeah, 100%. But what were you going to say? Because I know you were. You I were was going to say that I feel like like growing up, I was not like babied in this. And I was blamed for everything. Wait, by your dad and your mom or most, just by your mom? Mostly my mom. Okay, that's it. <laughs> but not by mom, your dad. But not by my dad. You see? That's the But not difference. by my dad. But my dad was just, my dad was kind of like, you know. He's an easygoing guy. The, yeah, like the one that would make the, the, yeah, peace. the peace, you know, after I'm being reprimanded and, and, and yelled at. And I think for me, it, it's not that it's being blamed for everything that like you grow up and you're, and you, and I develop like this like defensive yeah. personality where it, it was hard for me to take accountability but it doesn't mean that I wasn't aware of like you know I listened like if anyone had um you know well you did this and blah blah, blah and this is how it made me feel I'd be so offended because I'm like no I didn't yeah. I didn't make you feel like that but then you know you got to step outside of yourself and be like okay well this isn't about me right this is about this person's feelings exactly. And um, I was, I've always been able to do that. Well, that's good. Because um, not, that, not a lot of people can do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? They get very caught up in their ego. Like, I didn't do that to you. I'm not that type of a person. Right. But it's not, like you said, it's not about what you're feeling. It's about what that person is explaining to yeah. you. Yeah. And, and even though I know it in the moment, maybe like a week or a month after, I'd be like, hey, you know what? She's, remember that she time said a week or a month <laughs> how you skip for a week to a month you're like yeah maybe five months remember that time that you were saying this i'm sorry i really see where you're coming or now it's like That's okay good. let me just in the moment try to see it be see more it. mindful be more mind yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. That's, that's a tricky one so the masculine energy is more potent um in anything not just relationship and sometimes the same sex family member can be jealous of you and you could be younger than yep. them. So the mom could be jealous of you. Mm. And sometimes that's yeah, karma. That's sometimes that's karma, right? Karma. So mm -hmm. let's say it's let's say you go out with a woman, fellas, and she's very jealous. Getting jealous how the waitress looks at you or whatever, and you ain't doing nothing. Her karma might be you guys have a daughter. That daughter clings to the father, and the mom is jealous of that. That's crazy, right? That's insane. Mm. That's crazy. It happens though. 
It happens often where, it happens especially the other way around, too. especially in yeah. our culture, mm -hmm. Latino, Afro Latino, like or Latina, um, the, the moms don't usually get along, mm, or the or the sons and the fathers don't usually get along. Mm. You see, it happens often, even that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. It, but I, what I was saying, it happens the other way, like. Um, I, and I'm using my my own life as an example. Before I had my first child, you know, his dad was the top of, top of the food chain. There's nothing better. I had my son. I was like, I don't know who you are. Come over here. Mm -hmm. And I just loved my baby. You know what I mean? And then that made him jealous, obviously, okay. because I stopped paying attention to him. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we have a baby now. It's all about the baby. Yeah. So you can't do right. that, can that either. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that I, you know, obviously the, my marriage to broke up after having two kids but that's something that i take accountability for like mm -hmm. you can't just treat somebody this way for such a long time and then just stop cold turkey you know what i mean yeah. that's yeah i had a responsibility that's um that comes with communication too yeah. mm -hmm. um and understanding um, there was none of that there was so, no communications so my highest valuable asset is my mind um my Ooh. spirit so i have an ancient that's spirit and um that also comes with like intuition. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, like I love my mindset, you know, it has catapulted me in whatever I'm doing, you know, and if it wasn't for my mindset, I would be in different circumstances, mm. you know, so that's a valuable asset. And anybody coming into my life, it doesn't necessarily mean a woman um, is in good hands because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the shit that's going on today, especially in Hollywood and exposure of what I was saying this shit years ago and people were like, stop talking about that. That's crazy. Da, da, da. It's happening. Mm. So I know how powerful I am, but my spirit saw things prior to me because when I sleep, my spirit leaves my body and travels, travels into the future, past, you know what I'm saying, whatnot, and then comes back. And then I just get these, why am I thinking this way? Divine assistance. Mm -hmm. So different universes too. What I'm saying might sound crazy, but like, that's what I'm talking about. I believe this. Mm -hmm. And because I believe it, it's like powerful for me. And anybody that comes around me, like I always elevate them. It's healing energy when you're around me. I elevate even your intuition. I make you think different. I make you move different. Mm -hmm. I said this earlier. I could take any woman and transition her. This is one of the mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. It's just certain things I'm not willing to subject myself to. <laughs> <laughs> because You're of smart you know your boundaries but i feel like that's you just all the time not just like right now How, does it change like does your value um or your most valuable assets like is it different every time no, or it's been it, like that it's for just been time. like that but see for me i feel like like you have moments that change i mean i just feel like i could i could list like all the things i, I don't feel like there's just one right but you're saying like the most valuable and I, my I'm answering like, okay, well, where am I at right now? Mm. I would say, obviously, like at the end of the day for me, it's like my heart mm -hmm. and my, and then, which is why I said like my kindness, right? Like the way I love mm -hmm. like that for me would be Tough forever mm -hmm. that how valuable I am. Right. But like right now it's the accountability be <laughs> because you're, because you're um very kind and you have a good heart mm -hmm. and you didn't say this part, but let's say you wear it on your sleeve mm -hmm. metaphorically. Mm hmm. You have a big responsibility. You know what that is? Probably not going to guess, so I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you have to vet properly, mm -hmm. not just with who you want your oh, partner right, right. to be, yeah. friends and stuff, because that is easy. Mm -hmm. Do you normally? Advantage of? You do. Absolutely, oh, 100%. Goodness. And even knowing, you know, I feel like we, like every, everyone... Um, I don't want to say like everyone gets taken advantage of, but like the kinder you are, you know, you, you try to overlook. Yeah. We things. all need something from someone, yeah. you know? So you do, people get used and there's a healthy way and there's, you know, the, the way mm -hmm. where it's like, you're really being taken advantage of. Um, and yeah, I do. I get, I, um, because I do have, you know, a big heart and I lead with love and, and kindness all the time. And even in the moments where I'm like, yeah, they're taking advantage of me. I'm not like upset because at the end of the day for me, it's like, I'm not going to let this stop me from being me. Right. Like, so I get taken advantage of by a hundred people. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. It hurts my feelings, you know, I'll cry about it or whatever. But at the end of the day, that's not going to stop me from continuing to love the way that I do mm -hmm. to show up the way that I do. 
and like it's not going to damage right. my heart, you know? And I think like people will say, but why put yourself in that position? Well, you're not strong enough to put yourself in that position. Mm. I'm strong enough because right. I, I could handle it because mm-hmm. I'm built different. Yeah, I could handle a thousand heartbreaks and still show up every day and, and love the same. Why? Because I feel like um, I feel like nobody nobody's perfect and everyone in this world needs love. And if I can, you know, you don't know how you can change somebody's world mm-hmm. by uh, by, by a simple kind. hello, yep. by a simple like like how's your day going? That's showing love to a person, you know, and and I just think everyone deserves love, no matter how fucked up of a person you are. You know what I think is um and this is my personal perspective. My personal perspective is um is good karma. That's how yeah, I look mm-hmm. at it. That too. It's I was like, say that. Yep. Because pe- people don't people really don't get it. And mm-hmm. the stuff that's going on right here, I said this last season, 2024 will be it of exposure, spiritual awakening. People don't get it. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is borrowed body. So I always teach people, and I've been saying this since 2016. Mold your spirit. Mm-hmm mold your spirit it's either gonna burn or it's gonna elevate Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's like you will live forever or you won't Mm -hmm. even when you're no longer here you will live forever mold your spirit the best way you can protect your soul don't sell it Mm -hmm. because the Mm -hmm. devil will come back to collect that's a synopsis on my seventh book there's still unfinished business Mm -hmm. on the back available on barnes and nobles the devil will come back to collect so just because you think yeah i'm gonna do this now blah 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 materialistic stuff it's the spirit that's why i said it's karma Mm -hmm. so it you don't lose nothing in being nice i always say you gain i um i treat the ceo the same way i treat the janitor Mm -hmm. and we've had conversations off camera and i've said um one time i was in the bathroom and the janitor's in there his job is to you know, do what he needs to do, right? It's not mm-hmm. the happiest job, but maybe he en- enjoys it. So I wash my hands and, you know, the paper towel, I roll it up and I think I'm a basketball player. <laughs> so I miss the, the tin, the tin uh, trash your day can. Job. So it, um, it fell on the floor. Like, I know he's going to pick it up, but I just picked it up. Mm. He was like, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm not looking for any rewards with that. You know what I'm saying? The older lady with the bags. I'm not looking for any rewards with that. Mm-hmm. I've been consistent with how I speak mm-hmm. for, since season one. You know, it's like your your issues are with God. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's it. So it's like people will say only God, like, yeah, you, everybody deserves love. You're right. But ultimately, you, you're, you are going to be judged. Like the yep. final testament, mm-hmm. revelations, like you are going to be judged eventually. And it's going to be like, is your soul, soul going to last or perish? Mm. You know, so it is conducive to your health to mold your spirit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To its divinity. You know, people don't get that. You know, they don't see what the end goal is for that. But, yeah. but they're not there yet, I think. Like you have to be mentally there to see and it sometimes it you is. need certain mentors that are mm-hmm. there to help you to help get you there see it. Yeah, because the people in your circle are doing the opposite I they're agree. dragging you down even worse like you could be the one who's in their divinity and, and all your friends are male friends or female you. friends leeching they're not even in theirs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so Sucking it's like every time every out. time you hang out with them you doing t- <laughs> <laughs> you heard that? every time you hang out with them you're doing um like just immoral things yeah and then you regret it later like it has to be certain certain things like i know we're friends but mm -mm, certain things i won't do i don't even agree with what you're doing so if you continue to do that i can't be friends with you anymore Mm -hmm. because i'm not gonna be able to be fake here Mm -hmm. so you know i don't really like it i'm holding you accountable to protect you and i know that where you are headed is on the path of self-destruction you you take my, what I'm yeah. saying at value if you want, but if not, you know it's gonna happen, and then you just break ties if they don't want to listen. Mm-hmm. You know because you're not subjecting yourself. To that. It doesn't make sense for you to play both sides of the fence. Mm-hmm. Last, good. For me, it's it's like I think that's that's a struggle where I have to like create those boundaries for myself so that it doesn't get to the point where I am being taken advantage of. But the way I, I like to look at things is like. At least I, I can walk away from any situation knowing that I either 
came in and, and was honest and gave it my all. And I walk away with no regrets as opposed to being like, well, I could have done this. I could have tried this. Mm. Um, so, you know, that helps. Yeah, but my, having boundaries is not it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And it's unhealthy on, on my part that I, yeah, I think I don't set boundaries. those yeah. boundaries for me. But, but, you know, it's because it's, that's showing your, yourself first and foremost, you know, yeah. self love. And mm -hmm. if you can't because I have a, I'm only about big, you know, setting boundaries. I have a girlfriend who does not know how to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't know how much you're just hurting yourself. You're putting you're setting yourself up right. for people to take advantage of you. Right. You right. Know what I mean, but is, I think it's beautiful how, you know, you don't, you do it because you don't, that's how you are. Like you're I don't, not I don't, I'm not anything. thinking. Yeah. I'm not thinking like this person's going to like screw me over because I show up genuine. Right. And, and yeah, there are like moments where you kind of are like, well, I didn't really like that, but like a, like a self, uh, a boundary that I, that I like to say, you know, to show, especially like other people, if someone is asking you something, you know, to do something and you're not sure, you know, if you want to, or it doesn't sound like right to you instead of, because, you know, I, people who don't put up boundaries, I feel like are, are like to well, please like, yeah, a lot. Sure, I'll do it. Right. Don't yeah. do that. Just be like, you know what? I'm going to have to check out my, my schedule. That's giving you that out. Mm -hmm. You know, for having to answer at that moment, and then you can hit them up and be like, "It's not, That's you know, what way. something's happening." That's how yeah. you start, like baby it's steps. communication, baby steps. you yeah. know, and it's like it's, it's self expression too. And exactly, and that's just... I'm gonna check my schedule. Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. For what? For whatever. I'm talking business wise. Oh, oh I, I, business, -wise. business. I'm yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, people. Okay. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know where y'all minds is at, but I'm talking business here. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that you did that. <laughs> or wait, right? Or or even like if it's a, a um like a or a you do me a maybe favor. a romantic. Hey, type come of here, do me something. a favor, come do this. Let me get back to you on that. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Let me check weird. my schedule. That's weird. I was talking, first of all, I was talking about professionally. <laughs> professionally, professionally, it's I weird. get that. Very weird. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. I do that. Just be straight. I understand what Just you're be straight. Yes, it's kind of like leading but somebody. You're talk, but you're talking on the perspective on, on the sense of somebody who is straight. It's a straight shooter has boundaries already. Mm. So you know you can't just expect somebody who doesn't have boundaries to just up and straight shoot. They're not. That's not how they are. Which yeah. is why they don't Baby have their boundaries. So Leticia, yeah. um, yeah. it's kind of naive mm. for you to think like, oh yeah, well I'm gonna be um, this and that with everybody. Like too trusting in a way. Oh, it's absolute. I I know that. You know what I'm saying. And that's, that's definitely something that I. <laughs> take accountability for <laughs> <She's> yeah. like, <laughs> um no it is it's it's a part that's like you just this is a messed up world and you can't be too trusting to just anybody or yeah. to everybody you have to like yeah. follow patterns and, vet um, people vet mm -hmm. like you said you know vet yeah you know what i'm saying because like for example like a relationship you guys need to engage with each other in every capacity mm -hmm. for you know if it's gonna last like, you're going to have arguments. Wait for that. Mm -hmm. Like, I love those times. Maybe that sounds toxic. <laughs> Sad. But I love, I love those times because I want to see how we <laughs> elevate from it. Mm -hmm. if, if we, like, end up breaking from it, okay, I, I could live with that too mm -hmm. if it's mutual. But I need to know how that's going to occur. Because the happiness, like the honeymoon stages that's lasting for years that's not realistic no mm -hmm. so you need to see especially when you're vetting a man how is his conflict resolving skills does mm -hmm. he have them is he like calm does both, he blame you yeah because both of y'all ladies said that y'all like the calmness right yeah. mm -hmm. so that's an intangible valuable asset oh, yes. to bring to the table <laughs> that might not be um you know common especially in today mm -hmm. yeah i don't think it's you know because because men are jaded and it has a lot to do with women and women are jaded and it has a lot to do with men. So it's kind of very hard to just have an adult conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if it does get a little intense, as long as nobody's calling each other out of their out name. Of the names. And, um, and don't get physical. There can, don't get physical. Right. And there can be some medium, like there can be some, um, you know, like a cornerstone. To like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're either going to agree to disagree. I think differently because I'm a masculine man. You think differently because you're a feminine woman. We're going to agree to disagree, you know, and it's going to come down to like, whatever it is, are you going to tolerate or not? Mm -hmm. You know, so the last question I have is if you woke up tomorrow as the opposite sex, what's the first thing you would do? If I woke up tomorrow as the opposite sex, 
the first thing I would do is <laughs> look at my penis. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same maybe, thing. I was thinking maybe like hold it, use about that. I don't know. That's um, what I was thinking. I, the first thing I would do is go pee. Like, yeah, I go and pee. Then just um, flop it around, <laughs> and just swing it around. Yeah, this is right. you don't understand women. We are obsessed with penises, okay? Because we don't have it. We have to squat to pee. You guys can stand just up. Whip I would it out. stand there and pee is what I would do. Yeah, just whip and it just out. just fling it around. Um, oh, that, that's a really... I, I, I thought about it. I'm like, I can't... I don't feel like as a woman, there's anything that a man can do that i can't i'm not saying i could do it better i'm just saying in general like that sounds like feminist no 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 no. i'm not saying i can do it but i'm saying like we're all human like i i don't think there's anything there's a lot of things you can't do that a man can like what pee standing up that's what i'm saying i would look at my penis you, i bench 300 and 300 pounds i'm not I cannot do that Okay. I'm being technical now. I get it, but I can, but just because I can't bench 300 pounds, I can still bench something. Yeah, but you can't bench the same weight. Okay, I understand what you're yeah. saying. Let me, I'm, I'm being too, let me, let me think. Well, she says that she wouldn't be able you know? to do it better. So, so there's a, there's a balance I of guess. masculine and feminine. And I'm not trying to debate you. Yeah. I just, like, I just don't let people come up here and just say whatever. He likes for us know, to think. That's like, fine. I got a lot of respect for you. I know. Um, But... It's just like, you know what I'm saying? I want to be able to tell the truth, you know? So at the end of the day, like, there's a lot of things that women can't do where they need men. And there's things that men can't do where they need women. Like, I can't have a child. I need a woman for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not as emotional. I mean, yes, I'm more logical. So I may not be sensitive to certain people's feelings, but the woman can kind of help me with that. Um, The woman can kind of, like I could vet to her and she could, you know, be there. I don't cry. Last time I cried was 2020 when my grandfather passed away. He was 101. Oh, mm. Um, But l- l- let's just use your imagination, right? Let's say I was feeling down, right? The woman can kind of elevate that. Oh, don't forget who you are. You're a king, blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. She could, oh, that's why it's good to have her around. You know what I'm saying? Like, she can, like, speak to the king in me, right? Because she's in her divinity, you know? So there's certain things I can't do. Like, if, if y'all ladies were to cry right now, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> are y'all okay? Uh, I'll probably look into the ceiling. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's certain things that women can bring to the table that men can't and men can bring to the table that women can't and this is why we're complementary opposites like the yin and yang to come together so when women say yeah there's nothing that a man can't do that i could do or vice versa it sounds feministic it's not like healthy it sounds toxic and that's also dangerous no man wants to hear that i'm just trying to help you and educate you no man wants to hear that i have a question are there women out there that can bench 300 pounds? Unless they take performance enhancement drugs, but they are not but biologically designed to do it naturally. Okay. I would never want to bench 300 pounds, even mm. if I was a man, because that's not my, my interest. But what I meant with that comment was, I feel like my mentality is like, I can do anything that I... I so you... I'm sorry to cut you off. Can you sleep with like an array of people and stuff of that nature and the man could do it because the man do it because the man does it can you do the same thing as a woman you're saying so so if you if both men and women are having unprotected sex Mm -hmm. and the woman is having like she's fucking with five different guys they're all bussing in her and he's having unprotected sex and he's fucking five different girls and he's bussing in them you're saying you could do the same thing and the result is going to be the same thing I didn't say the result is going to be the same thing. I'm just I'm saying, just giving Andrew. you an example because you said anything a man can do, kind of I could do. Um, so technically, can, yeah. If I wanted to, if I if that's what I wanted to do, no, you I'm, can't. It, why you am, can't why do can't it? I? Because only a sex worker can do that because she's putting her emotions in check. But that's but yeah. But, but, so you can't do it. But the debate: a here, feminine woman. Are you in your feminine or masculine? I'm in my feminine. Okay, so a feminine woman can't do what a masculine everything a masculine man can do. Right or wrong? But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about in general. Right or wrong? Sure, right. Okay. 
we're just talking about a general thing. If I if I wanted to, whether I'm in my feminine or masculine, if I wanted to, I could. You couldn't. Physically, okay. I could. Suhey? <laughs> you couldn't. I could you, I couldn't like, have sex being, with like being five a, men. You have technical? the you have the well, I, don't I wouldn't vulgar, want to. Right? Let's let's just You say have it. the I, whole. So reality is not every man is built the same. Let's say you're with an Asian, black, white, Hispanic. Not every man's built the same. Some are gonna stretch it out. Oh some Lord. are gonna be whatnot and whatever. Some leave it sore, some whatever. So you might not be able to go boom, 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 boom. But a guy who has a side sex job, he could do morning, night, whatever it is. He might be able to. So no, you can't physically really do it. Disagree. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wait, can I ask you so a question what, though? What up? What would you do if you woke up as a woman tomorrow? So we'll first get to you and then I'll end with me. <laughs> I said, I oh, said okay. what I would do. So what I would do is first thing I would do would see if I get into the club for free. You crack you me know up. Of saying? course you're going to get into the club for free. And then I would Ladies just be night. like, you know what? What else could I get? <laughs> see, I think my only concern would be peeing standing up because that's the one thing that I really can't do. Mm -hmm. You know, and as far as me being, you know, waking up as a man, I know that I, I could, you know, as a man, I could have sex with whoever I want. I could have sex, you know, like you said, plenty of times, you know, in one day if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I said about peeing standing up and flinging it around because I yeah. never had it before. I yeah. want to see what it's about. I what mean, this maybe bad boy like having, having sex would feel different. So with penis. I I if you have, I um, I'm sorry, so. if you have a son... Do you think you can raise him to be a man than, than a man can raise him to be? Like, do you think, okay, a man, I could do what a man could do. So I could raise my son, hypothetically, to be a man versus the man raising the son to be a man. So I could do the same thing he could do. Do you believe that? Do you um, think a mother, a single mother can raise a son? Uh, to be, to a, be man. a man i that's a loaded a loaded question for me i have two perspectives on that i think i think i want to say yes because i know a lot of women that have raised um men like really good men on their own where the father has not been present i do however believe that it is important it, it's not ever going to be the same and the importance of having a father raised his son there's nothing like that mm. you know but there's also men that i've raised boys to not be men <laughs> you right. know what i mean so so the importance i i do believe i don't think we can do a better job than men i, th I think a father a man needs to be able to raise his son yeah and i and the importance of that is <laughs> it's great but i do believe that it's possible for a woman to raise a man so what do you think well i'm gonna have to say because i have uh a son okay so you guys are speaking perspective okay I so am. let me let me answer this but, no answer way is, i didn't get a chance to say no anything. because it, it's just you guys are just looking at it from your own view and and the small circle but of people you, you don't even right but you don't even know what i was gonna say though what do you okay. think i was gonna say as a mother who has tried it, I'm going to tell you that no, you cannot. Okay. You have okay. the best intentions to want to have to, raise, to have your son raised, you know, to be a good man. But a good man is um, subjective to that person, yes. right? So, so, ladies and gentlemen, are you done? No, but I didn't go, ahead cut now. You off. go ahead. Go ahead. Go nope. ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there's a reason why there's grapists in the world. There's a reason why there's a lot of men who don't know how to treat women right. That Brooklyn situation when the girl turned down the duels, they beat her up. Um, women getting punched and stuff like we hear these stories. Most likely, uh, ninety nine percent of the time, these fathers are not present, present. in the life. The mother is. That's why these guys don't know how to treat a woman because if they had a father present and the woman was present, he would actually see how he's interacting with the mom and it would be ingrained in him. Those guys definitely don't have fathers in their life. Man is divine, not males. You're just born with it. Man is divine. You have to build that up. And a man is going to bestow that upon his son because he wants his son to continue the legacy. So he's going to teach him things naturally. 
Amen. So can a woman um, train a boy to be a man the same way a man would? No. 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 Absolutely not. Even if it's subjective or whatever. Mm. As a matter of fact, single moms are most likely going to raise sons to be beta males. The only way they're going to be able to raise them as boys is if they're following guys like me and be like, watch this guy's stuff or this guy or that guy or that father is active in the kid's life. That's the only way. And he's a good man, not a deadbeat, because that's the same thing as having a single mom. The deadbeat yeah. father is a single mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, a single mom. You see what I'm saying? So the reality is um, it can't. It can't. And it's very detrimental. It's very important that the masculine energy is present mm -hmm. because it's more potent than the feminine. The single mom has to turn her masculine up now. Mm -hmm. You right. know, so that's like a situation where a woman can't do what a man would be able to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's detrimental for the next generation. It's not just a battle of the sexist thing. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when a man takes pride, like I always say, I would love to have more sons than daughters. I don't have any kids yet. Because I naturally train men. Like, like I love to do that. Teach them the right way. Because a man takes pride in that. He takes pride in that. And more men are going to hold other men accountable more than women are going to hold other women accountable. So it's very rare that... The mom is going to hold the son accountable. And as he gets older, he's going to rebel against you. I don't see you as a man, mom, in his mind. He may not be that disrespectful to say that. Where's my pops? He should be teaching me these things. Don't do this, son. Don't do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. I'll be home at nine o'clock. He's going to start to rebel. Because eventually he's just not looking at you as that. They say it. Psychology. Boys watch what men do and they mimic that they don't really listen to what they say mm. that's true well you, you prove me wrong a woman cannot do what a man can do um great point there, there are some yeah. things that women can do better yes. than men and there are some things that men can do better, better. than women but the reality is i don't ever want to come up here and be like Yo, men do this better. No, because I'm all about connection. Mm -hmm. I'm all about coming together. Same. Man. I always say, yo, I don't fold clothes well, but I do it. <laughs> I don't like to do laundry, but I do it. Mm -hmm. I don't like to clean dishes, but I do it. I don't like to cook, but I do it. But I know if a woman came in, she going to do that better than me. And I don't have a problem taking a step back to let her do that because I know if there's some fixing that needs to be involved... I'm going to do that, and I love doing that because I'm a handyman. I love using my hands. Mm -hmm. The door needs fixing? Great. I'll jump on it. Let me get my toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, ultimately, like, I'm about connection. You know, I'm not, like, about the debates and stuff like that. I'm not trying to debate you. But no, no, no. Yeah. And, it, and it wasn't that and it wasn't and the statement wasn't about like any like no competition. It was just like in general, I can't think of anything that I'm like, what can a man do that I would like to do? Right. Like mm -hmm. I just if I couldn't think of anything aside yeah. from like looking at my penis. And <laughs> penis. And we also, I think that's the most important part. Yeah. And we also have a lot harder than you. You guys have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah, we got to we got to earn our value for this and that and acquire certain things in life. Yeah. A woman could just show up. But it's like if if both of us are struggling and we both make an OnlyFans, you're going to be successful in five minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be struggling. I mean, I don't know if you would be struggling oh, okay. yourself. Okay, well, unless um, some, um, hmm, what else? Maybe can a I regular schmegular looking type dude. Yeah, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Like, we would struggle in that aspect because you dominate in the beauty, you mm. know, aspect. I, well, I don't want to say me because I'm handsome. You're beauty too. too. But you both are a bunch of beautiful men, people. Men are just not naturally, like, you don't just look at men and naturally, just, oh, yeah, he's fine. He looks so good. No. Uh, you're looking at him. Oh, does he have a blue check mark? Instagram. Mm -hmm. How much money he makes? Which doesn't what does mean he do for? Nowadays. What does he do for a living? It, it's mm -hmm. that first, you know, naturally. Not for everybody. So right. the woman instinctively could always 
Like I gotta find, I gotta figure it out. She could quickly make something. She could quickly go strip and just make that money back in five minutes. We right. heard it. The actress and uh, Sopranos. She wasn't getting roles in in, in during the pandemic. Oh. She made her OnlyFans mm-hmm. in five minutes. She paid her off her um her mortgage. Oh yeah. wow. You see how easy it is? Like, yeah. But I, also, not a lot of women can, can do that. You know what I mean? Like, yes, a lot of... If all, no, if all the women had, like, uh, um, uh, that confidence to do it, I'm sure every, you know, all the women would... But not, not a lot of women are like that. They're shy. Let me just say something. The, it's not that. There are actually women that have said, oh, my face is not going to be seen. Guys will pay for my feet. There's a lot more c- well, crazy that, weird freaks. not bad, though. Freaks that are men that are willing to subject themselves to certain things yeah. than women will. So, oh, I'll just sell my panties online. I'll do this. There was a woman that was selling her farts. That's disgusting. And she got money. Yeah, became yeah. a millionaire There's off a lot that. Of crazy fetishes out so, there. So the reality is, like, it doesn't matter. It's more so just you being a female and the man just always observing you as a sexual object specifically a hole a body to use to masturbate for instant gratification it is the men who are conscious and in their divinity that are saying what else do you got Mm. what else do you bring to the table though Mm. Mm, that's it no because i could get a lot of that i see that all day but what else you got that's the man who's in his divinity that's the man who's conscious when he's conscious and he reaches that god mode he's selective mm-hmm. i don't know how how much time we have left before we have to we're done the show. oh because we're i wanted to ask her um first of all thank you for coming on the show i thank love meeting the people me. that i've already yes. met on the phone i like to meet them face to face i love it yes um but also um, I know you said that you had a lot of acting stuff out there. What can we see you on? You gotta let us know so we can put it up and oh, people yeah. can follow. Oh, that's so sweet. There, there's a there's a Monopoly commercial <laughs> that is out right now that I did. Um, there is I shot two movies. Uh, one is called The Contract, and the other is called Robin. I'm not too sure what streaming platforms um, they will go on, but it will be streaming soon. And when it you does, gotta let it, I yes, will please let definitely us know. let you know. But um, other than that, like my social media is TCA Perez, TCIA Perez. Um, and that's just across the board. That's Instagram, right, Twitter. Right. Yeah. Nice. We're going to put so that TCA up, people. Perez. But yeah, those are the, the two things that I have upcoming. And then what about your I'm chef really, stuff? Yeah, I'm trying to get more. Um, I want to put more footage out there with with my cooking um, and um, like make more time for that just so I can. Yeah, you we'll know, put content. I'll follow book. you. I'll follow you. Get your recipes. Yeah, cooking. yeah. I do have a book. I have a book that um, I'm working on. That like a recipe book? A recipe <gasps> book. Yeah. Ooh. So my specialty is sauces and um, and I can make hundreds of different sauces that you can add to pasta same sauce to pasta fish chicken whatever wow. protein so that is coming That's out so soon exciting. hopefully yeah. so by the summer i'm summer buying time. it i'm buying by it summertime yes okay. and so then I, and then you have to sign it yes I'll so before you it. leave i need an autograph and then when i get okay. your book you need to sign that too i'm gonna be All straight right. people <laughs> i'm gonna sell it and then they have mad money no i'm just kidding i know right? so um this is part of the segment where we ask for final thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have final thoughts, food for thought, audience yourself? Like do you also um, like us, hate us, have a problem with what I say? Um, anything, final thoughts. Final thoughts. I'll answer the last question first. I don't. I love you guys, actually, which is why I was like, I have to make it to new york Yay. be on the show i think the podcast is great i i think our conversations like from the beginning like there was something about this podcast specifically that um because i think i told you i'm like i've been you know people have reached out to me about doing podcasts and there was something about this one that i'm like I love the just the mindset really like with the feminine and alpha and mm. dom and sub and then and there is a traditional part of that like your your way of thinking is it's 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 not common yeah yeah yeah. and they and there aren't a lot of men out there you know like that um nowadays that are not like in the right mindset so Mm -hmm. the discipline um therapy is great because i definitely um feel like everybody like your perspective just really 
it's inclusive. Everybody can learn something. From yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and everyone needs discipline. <laughs> and that's I feel I like, like that's that. what it is. Um, final thoughts. Um, I don't have any final thoughts. Okay. And you know, I think I'm just really happy to be here. And I think um, I guess to the people out there, just know who you are. Know who you are, and I love that you you're so secure in who you are. Mm-hmm. So you're so secure in who you are, and we're all like ever evolving. And um, mm-hmm. and yeah, just know who you are, pursue what you want, and be true to that, and be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Wait, you didn't ask her a question. One very was important question. It? You didn't what? ask her if she was impressed with how we set up. Oh, what did you think? I'm so impressed. Yeah, this is she's this whole. Uh, she's so helpful. She was so... like, and she was her like, kindness and her heart. Oh, can we? Can she's I so do sweet. something? Can I? Can we help? You're a guest. <laughs> guests don't get their hands dirty. I know. No, they're professionals over here. This whole setup, professionals. Okay. They're on it. Is straight. Forward. I love this. Yes, you guys mm-hmm. are doing it. So, <laughs> what I've said mine. Final thoughts. Okay. Um. So mine are. I'm happy you could be in studio. Yes. Um, you know, I love the perspectives. I love conversation. I love dialogue. Um, I love to bring people on, get different perspectives. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like the debate. I could debate. Oh, I could really debate. Sure. But <laughs> I'm, I, pizza I'm guys more debate. so. Um, I more so would rather debate with a man than a woman, because mm. I don't believe like. It's just I'm. We're not on the same level, you know. No disrespect. He, he doesn't believe anything we say. No, it's I'm just, just, I'm just to, be, to like debate with a woman. Yeah, to yeah. debate with a woman is kind of like I'm putting myself on your level. You know what I'm saying? I'm masculine. You right. know, most likely a woman coming in feminine. Right. So you know, um, I just like masculine is contentious. So a masculine woman, yeah, we could be that, but if it, I'm not gonna let it go that far. So I'm to, still looking at you as you as a woman. To be clear, by you saying you're not on my level, you're not saying you're better or higher. You're right, just, just saying different. we're just on two different. Correct. We're just on two different levels. Yeah. But I, cool. do, I, I do believe that's men definitely a are, trigger for people. I do believe men are superior to women. <clears throat> so that's the chauvinism. Um, but, you know, like I said, there are certain aspects that women do better than men. But I do believe men are superior. Um, it has to be like that for like, the law, right? For for discipline, for there's no chaos. It's it's like um two captains can't be on the boat. It's not gonna take off. And mm. and a woman naturally doesn't um like build anything with a man on her level. So those women today that are saying I need a man on my level, God forgive them, they don't know what they're saying. I do. They don't know. They it's it's more so it's more so I'm not going to try to train nobody. I got to this level. Da, 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 da. I need a man that got his shit together. That's really what they mean. They don't mean on level. I'm thinking technical because technically, if you're saying on my level, he's going to be feminine. Mm-hmm. He's going to be doing feminine things. You know what I'm saying? That is counterintuitive to your nature. Like, you don't like that. So it's actually like when women say that, words are powerful. They're setting themselves off for failure. Mm-hmm. That's why oh, they always get bait- betas and they complain. You know, um, so like learn yourself, learn your nature. In finding yourself, you're going to find God because we are gods and goddesses with amnesia. I always say this. Mm. And um, you're going to like build self-love and discipline and have accountability. So now you'll be able to vet properly and set certain standards and boundaries, and boundaries um, where it's going to be conducive to your health. Mm-hmm. People that don't set boundaries are always ill, mm-hmm. mentally ill, physically ill, uh, spiritually ill, sexually ill. You know what I'm saying? Like you're just fucking with the dude because you're just used to that. You're just used to him. But he's he's fucking I you up. Say I don't feel ill. By or the way. or <laughs> I, I, not feel, I, I mean, not perfect. Be there, but. Yeah, but I I my spirit's always up. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Or the or the woman. I've gotten you know faith. I got God. Yeah, or the woman. Life. So you know, it's all about like the purpose of life is finding yourself. Yes. And then the second purpose is how you're gonna serve. 
you know, um, the world community, mm -hmm. um, building a legacy. Um, it's not always about what you do, but might be who you raise mm -hmm. that might contribute to society or be a prominent exactly. figure in society. Um, so a woman's legacy might not be making the most money in the world. It might be being that helpmate to that guy who's successful mm -hmm. and taking care of him. I bring, I accept him in my life. He's going to take care of everything. He's going to lighten the load. And by him lighting the load, I could do the soft things that's not putting me in um, stressful situations for me to be more in my feminine. And assisting him is going to make me happy. Because when my man's happy, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Which I agree 100% with. Mm -hmm. You know, so ultimately, like, connection is why we're here. Mm. So some people might complain about, oh, why are there so many relationship podcasts? I love it, to be honest. It, be it wasn't like this back in the days. I love it that more people are talking, especially the men, of how mm -hmm. they feel. Because a mm -hmm. lot of men don't talk about how they feel. They I just eat shit, take shit. So it's very important that we are able to communicate effectively and have adult conversations mm -hmm. and come to a medium. Like if we can agree to disagree, it's, it's perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine with it because I know that a feminine woman is not always going to agree with everything that I say. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you talk about the asshole situation earlier. I might be that, but she still ain't going nowhere because mm. she's looking at what outweighs it. Mm -hmm. There's more pros than cons here. Right. And the act the asshole actually, the irony <laughs> protects me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So in a way, it's like it's like, oh, it's like an alchemist. Somebody that takes a negative situation and makes it into a positive, like mm -hmm. the silver lining. Mm, yeah. There's a silver lining here. Yeah. Definitely. You know, so it's about like that, finding your purpose in life. Yeah. It's not about trying to do what somebody else's purpose is so it's not ladies start trying to get the bag because every woman's getting the bag you have a special purpose yeah guys it's not to like just what are guys doing who knows <laughs> you know what i'm saying like trying to be like the popular guy on youtube Find your own niche. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to talk about what he's talking about if you don't believe it. Just because you see his success, that ain't really who you are. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Stop. That's not who you are. Even off camera, you're not like that. Stop talking about that. You're yeah. just regurgitating. That's not you. Come on. We know you're a liar. Yep. <laughs> I can't wait to find this Monopoly commercial. That's all yeah. I'm thinking about. <laughs> That's All right, um, so that's it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are tuned into one of the most raw, uncut, unapologetic, real, <laughs> no holds barred, intense. Thought provoking. Mm. Intense, thought provoking, thought -provoking uh, conversation sure. stimulating after dark. Only on the Discipline Therapy Podcast. Peace. 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 <laughs>